and who says homemade tools don't work. Just looking through the book here before we go outside and it looks like we have that cover to remove. There's some sort of a lock washer with tabs in there. Uh, not there, there's some shims behind there. And then we get into a special puller that we will need to remove this bearing cage up here. So I've already done this all on one side. I just wanted to kind of show you guys what we're going to be getting into because some of these are specialty tools. And even once you get down to this point, <clears throat> you need the wrench to take that nut off there and it pushes the bearing out. And then you need a large bearing separator, which I do not have here, to remove it the rest of the way. There they show pushing that out and then eventually on to taking the rest of the final drive apart. So let's get out there and get to work. All right, we made it out to the shed. Let's go ahead and pull these four bolts off and get this cover out of the way. Somewhat of a semi-fluid grease yet. It is running into the pan. Gasket's pretty well dried out. Get some of this grease wiped away here. This is some real thick, thick and nasty stuff here. Now this washer in here, if you can find it, it has two pins in it. There's one and there's the other right there. I'm not sure if you can make out that circle in there. But there's a hex cut into that washer and if you just try to turn this, it will turn this washer with and I'm sure it would shear them pins off. So we need to get this pried away first and then we can take that nut loose. Here you can see the two holes in it, and they line up on those dowels. That piece out, now we can take that nut off. Well, I'm not a big fan of using the adjustable wrenches, but unfortunately it's the only thing I had that would fit. Now these are two separate pieces, it's just the grease holding them together. So you have your nut, there's them two dowels, and then this is also doweled as well. onto your shims and this is how you set your track frame alignment with your sprocket so we want to keep those as much intact as possible and keep them on the side that they belong on and then I believe that is the hub. Yep, that is the hub. There's nothing left there. So with all this apart, this piece that mounted to the track is just a bronze bushing floating on this hub. And so that piece can come out of there. There you can see that bronze and this side's been running dry for a while. And now is where that puller comes in. There are two drilled holes in this hub on each side. They call this a bearing support. I guess I shouldn't call it a hub. We'll call it what Cat calls it. And that puller has to grab into those two and then you push off from this shaft here to get it off that taper. Now before we do that, there are two bolts 
up underneath that need to be undone as well as I'm going to take the lock off for the adjustment on the bearing as well or I believe it's either a bearing adjustment or bellows adjustment either way I'm going to take that off and then we'll bring that tool over that I made and I'll show you kind of what I came up with so I'm going to go ahead and start with the smaller lock bolt here it's just a 3 8 bolt 9 16 head we'll get that out of the way and then there is a locking tab that that holds in. There's that locking tab. So it would focus. There we go. Nothing special. But it keeps that lock ring from turning. And so we'll switch over here to a 15 16 and just loosen up these bolts for this bearing retainer. Or we'll just take them all the way off. Either way, works for me. Okay guys, we need to talk about the pulling tool that I made. I took a piece of three inch pipe, welded some 5 8 nuts 180 degrees apart on that pipe. This pipe is three inches long. The nuts are three quarters of an inch in. Like I said, they're spaced right across from each other. Then I welded that to a half inch plate. These are just base plates that I had laying around that already had four holes in them. And then I just put a fifth hole in the center for the lead screw to come through. And then attached to that, I just have the OTC T-bar puller. In conjunction with these 5 8 nuts welded on there, I made these bolts in the lathe. They step down to uh, 3 8 of an inch, about a quarter inch long, maybe a hair longer, maybe about 300 thousandths. Um, these thread in there, in through here, and then these actually will bite into that hole there on either side, giving us something to grab onto. Very similar to what Cat had, but not exact. So to get this on here, quite simply just slides right over. These started in there. And then because I welded on them nuts, they are a little bit of a tight fit. I suppose a guy could run a tap through them and clean that up, but for what they are, they work just fine. I'll kind of wiggle it around until they find where they're supposed to be here. And then we'll bring you back. So with each of those 5 8 bolts threaded in and in their pilot holes, see rock up and down, get that lead screw turned in until we get it snug, and we'll start putting some pressure on it. And bring that oil pan back in here. We'll go ahead and remove this. Look at the bearing. Bearing looks and feels good. I don't see any rollers that are pitted or rusty. I believe that is supposed to be there. That looks like an awfully clean break if that's actually broke out of there. See someone has been in here before. 
See all the tooling marks in here going both ways. I'm currently waiting on, I ordered a spanner wrench large enough to take those off because this bearing will have to be pushed out of the way here in order for the rest of this to come apart. Down here we have the bellows. Oh, they are stuck in here. We're at the other side of the crawler. These bellows came out. Actually look pretty good. Nice and flexible yet. I think we can just recork them and reuse them. Same thing, looks like someone's been in here and yeah, there's that. That must be a cast in piece and then they machine it afterward. But the side looks much the same. Bearing looks pretty good. There's inside that housing that the bellows came out of. Bearing race in there looks really good. I learned my lesson to put the oil pan underneath. This will be easy to clean up, but that's never fun. But this will probably be a short video, guys. Like I said, I'm waiting on the tool to take these apart. I don't really just want to hammer and chisel on them. Uh, even with a brass chisel, you still end up marring them up pretty good. I just don't like doing things that way. Not if I have a choice. And I'm going to need a larger bearing separator. My set does not go big enough for this guy. I'm actually waiting on two tools to take this apart. Once those come in... We'll get the rest of this apart, but we may have to move on to a couple other things. It might be about time for a pony motor episode. See what we can get into there. So, thanks everyone for watching, subscribing, hitting the like button. I appreciate it, guys. We'll keep this going. I just, I don't have all the proper tooling to do what I need to do. So until then, we'll catch you later. So it turns out, mm, I think I'm wrong here. That whole thing moves. This is a dead shaft. This does not rotate, and I knew that. Obviously that's what these bearings are for. But I thought this had to come apart in order to get, I, I thought this bearing here rode on the dead shaft. I did not realize that it does not. So what that means is I can come back here and pull the bolts out of the diff cover or the final drive cover and remove this assembly as one. That's beneficial in multiple ways. Since I don't have the tooling here yet, we can keep going as well as that means I'm that much closer to sending this main casting to sandblast which means we're that much closer to painting at least one major piece. And then we can start reassembly. So, I might have jumped the gun on telling you pony motors next. Let's go ahead and pull this final drive. So with all 16 perimeter bolts taken out, I believe we should be able to take that off. Now I know it is sitting on two dowels because I did see that as I was going around. Let's see if we can get it to pop off of there. Well, I was able to get it started. We'll see if we can keep it going here. Well, the good news is the finals had oil in them. Um, 
which is sad because I had the drain plug out at one time and uh, nothing came out. I assumed they were empty. I guess next time a guy should poke around with a screwdriver a little more. There, just like the movie Big Daddy, you just cover it up and pretend it's not even there. No, that cardboard will soak that oil up. Come back in the morning, you peel it all off, and then you wipe up the little bit that's left. I'm not a big fan of floor dry. I know a lot of people like it, a lot of people use it. There are certain dealers that won't use it. I know Caterpillar is one of them. I have to agree with them. I think it makes more of a mess than anything else. But enough of my ranting, let's go ahead and pull this spinal out of here. See what it looks like on the inside. Well, there it is, guys. That's that dead shaft in there that's pressed into the main housing you can take those out i don't see any reason to so i'm going to leave it in you know if this end was all messed up you could replace it this lower part of this casting will also come off that will come off before it goes to blasting i'm going to see about getting these bearing races out of here before it goes to blasting save all that stuff the bearings actually look really good in here there you can see the inside of the bull gear Everything looks pretty good, uh, short of cleaning stuff up in here and possibly seals. I'd like to reuse most of it, obviously, the gasket and that will go. But if we can get that bearing pulled out of there, keep that in one piece, just clean all this stuff up. Most of it's good and plenty usable for years to come. So. I'm going to go ahead and get busy on the other side, and that means this casting is basically blast ready. There's a few smaller pieces I'm going to I have to remove yet. The drawbar is one of them. I am going to leave the drawbar brackets on, mainly because there's no real reason for me to take them off. Um, other than that, it'll be sealing up a lot of the... Uh, areas that I can like this dead shaft in that I found that electrical tape works the best Wrap that two or three times get it nice and built up and then as long as you're blasting guys pretty good He'll stay away from those areas. He knows not to blast in here. He knows this area is a You know internal compartment. I mean he's done this for many many years. He's an older gentleman He's actually close to retirement. That's Another reason I want to get this to him, he does excellent work. So this will probably be going. And so on to the next step. Thanks, everyone. We'll see you again next time.